They will give you plenty of blur. Even a 50mm f2.8 will make some blur if you're close to your subject. And if you go for longer focal lengths, like 100mm for example, or a 135mm, well, you'll get all the blur you could ever want from a lens like that. Maximum blur factor abounds. Hey everybody, thank you for checking in once again and welcome to another episode. Well, we've shot lots of very fast lenses on this show from f1.4 vintage lenses, f1.2 vintage lenses. We've shot some f1.1 lenses, even up to f0.95 and all those lenses give us maximum blur factor. Today though, we're going to talk about lenses with a more modest maximum aperture of f2.8. Now f2.8 maximum aperture lenses are really good for several reasons. The first of those reasons is they tend to be quite a bit cheaper than lenses that open up just that little bit wider. If you go to f2, if you go past f2.8, even to f2 to f1.8, then you will end up paying significantly more for your lenses, especially if they're longer focal length lenses. So f2.8 lenses tend to be relatively cheap. Secondly, they're inherently sharp. They're, they have inherent sharpness and will give you lots of very sharp images right from wide open. Because they don't open too wide, there's less room for flaws to develop. There were less challenges for the designers to overcome. So they're inherently sharp lenses and they'll give you very, very sharp images right straight from the outset wide open. Thirdly, they will give you plenty of blur. Even a 50mm f2.8 will make some blur if you're close to your subject. And the closer you can get to your subject, the more blur you're going to make. But even at some distance, a 50mm f2.8 will give you separation between your subject and your background. And of course, you can have too much blur. How much blur do we really need? We don't want so much blur that we're wiping out all the details in the background. F2.8 lenses will give you some blur. And if you go for longer focal lengths, like 100mm, for example, or a 135mm, well, you'll get all the blur you could ever want from a lens like that. Maximum blur factor abounds. So for all those reasons, these lenses make really good sense. All right, so firstly then, let's have a look at a couple of 50 millimeter lenses. First one is this Carl Zeiss Jena Tessar. Um, this is a very, very beautiful lens. It's made by Carl Zeiss Jena. Almost everything that was made by Carl Zeiss Jena was really, really nice. There are some that were farmed out to, you know, third party manufacturers towards the end of the production run in the maybe late 80s, early 90s. But these ones, the Tessar F2.8 50mm, these are a real Carl Zeiss Jena lens and they come with all the Carl Zeiss Jena advantages. They have very, very beautiful colour. These lenses will really give you some kick if you like your colours saturated. They're really good for that. They have very good inherent sharpness and they'll give you plenty of blur because this little lens, this delicious little lens, goes down to a minimum focus distance of, let's have a look, 35 centimetres. In fact, it's gone just a little beyond the dial there to 34 centimetres. So this lens will get really close, about a foot from the subject, 30 centimetres or so. At that distance, you've got all the blur you want. There's no problem with blur. And this is a very, very sharp lens as well. The Tessar design, Tessar, the name Tessar refer, refers to a lens design. That is the actual optical layout of the lens. And the Tessar design is inherently sharp. It's a very, very sharp um, type of 
uh, lens design. It can't go over 2.8, so that's why any Tessar of 50mm is going to be around about 2.8. It's not going to go much further than that. It's not going to open much wider than that because of technical difficulties, but this is a lovely one. There are other ones as well. I've got also here, this is another Tessar design. This is the Indostar 61. This is a lovely little lens from the Ukraine. Um, it was, uh, it hails from the Soviet days, so it's a proper vintage lens and it essentially traces its roots back to 30s lens design. So this is a real vintagey kind of lens. It's very sharp, it gives beautiful pastel-y kind of colours. They're not terribly saturated or pumped up, but they've got a real beautiful delicate feel to them and it looks very cool as well. We'll have a closer look at these in a moment. This will give you some blur, but as a rangefinder lens, it only goes to three foot, three feet, I should say, or one meter closest focus distance, but it will still make you some blur out and about general shooting, in general shooting. Even on the street, it will still give you some separation. If you're up to about, I don't know, three meters away from your subject, it will still give you some separation. So, these are great lenses. These are not the only two 50mm f2.8 lenses around, but these are two really nice ones. Let's have a closer look at them. Here's the Carl Zeiss Jena lens, and this is a lovely optic. It's pretty small, so it's not going to unbalance your camera too much, if at all, with an adapter on it. It's going to extend to about there, so it's really not going to be that bigger lens. This is an M42 mount version. I think most of them were M42. You might find some in exact amount, but a lovely little thing. And considering the quality of Carl Zeiss Jena lenses, this one is a real steal. It's a beautiful little lens. It makes fantastic images. Here for comparison is the Indostar lens. This is actually Many people turn their noses up at this lens, but this is one of my favorite lenses. I love the images it makes. This was my only lens on an old Fed4 camera that my dad bought for me. And I made some nice images with this one. I've shot it a lot on digital and I love the look of this lens. It really makes a digital mirrorless camera look great. It sits very nicely on any mirrorless camera, as does the CZJ Tessar. Two beautiful little lenses and very nicely made as well. Both are very nicely finished. So there are some real bargains about in the 50mm sector and these are just two of them. The CZJ Tessar is really sharp with a lovely close focus distance of 35 centimeters. It will probably go a little bit closer than that. So it will give you some beautiful blur. It's very cheap. They tend to go for around 40 pounds. You'll probably find one cheaper than that. If you're patient, you'll probably pick one of these up for around about 20 pounds. And that's gotta be great value. These are fantastic little optics a real vintage lens with real vintage character. And the same for this little Indostar as well. This one's even cheaper. You can pick these up sometimes for a tenner. I've even had them given to me. They're so little are they value. But look, this is a 1930s optic that's coated. Where else are you gonna get a lens like that? And it makes really nice images as well. It's nicely made, it looks good and it's cheap. What's not to like? Two very nice f2.8s that you would do very well to seek out if you're looking for a 50mm for your mirrorless camera. All right, so now we move onwards in focal length here. We've got a 100mm lens, 100mm f2.8 lens. It's the Olympus OM Zuiko f2.8, but there are others. This is one of, I don't know about many, but certainly several many manufacturers made 100mm f2.8 lenses. This one is a beautiful one. I absolutely love what this lens can do. It's an early silver nose version. 
there's its silver nose and I just absolutely love what it can do. Let's have a closer look and just look at that big beautiful lens. I've got the sun shining on it, directly on it there so you can see all the reflections that the coatings make. These silver nose lenses I believe are single coated. Just check out how small this lens is. It's absolutely tiny. This is no bigger than a good many 50mm lenses. It's got beautiful big wide knurled focus ring. Aperture ring at the front on this one. That's quite unusual but it suits me because I learned photography on Ukrainian lenses which had their apertures at the front at the time. This is just such a gorgeous optic. I can't tell you how nice it is. It's beautifully made like all the Zuikos. I'll show you the rear elements. There they are and you can see the coatings. I don't think this is a single coated lens. I think it does have more than one element coated. So I think I'm probably in error saying that the silver nose lenses are single coated because I can see more than one layer of coating there reflecting in the sunlight. The front element is coated but I think the rear also is coated. That looks pretty much coated to me. This is a beautiful little optic. I've used it and used it and used it and I can very highly recommend it. So what a gorgeous optic this is. But there are other lenses available. This is not the only one that you can get, not the only 100mm f2.8 lens that you can buy. There are plenty of others from Nikon, Canon, Konica and most of the major manufacturers. In fact, really what I'm focusing on with this lens is not necessarily this particular lens itself but the combination of 100mm and f2.8 maximum aperture it just seems to work really really well it gives you plenty of reach on any camera full frame it's 100 on APS-C it acts as 150mm on micro four thirds it will act as a 200mm so you've got plenty of reach whichever camera system you're using it's really really small and it's really really sharp and this one gives beautiful colours as well. I love the delicacy of the colours from these silver nose lenses. I've shot this one and shot this one and shot it. I've shot the flipping heck out of it on Olympus OM cameras, on my Sony A7, on my Fujifilm X-T3. And it's just delightful on all of them. I highly recommend a 100mm lens. F2.8 will mean you'll get one at a reasonable price. You won't be paying too much for it. And I can really recommend this Olympus one as well. It's lovely. These tend to go for around £100. You might pay up to 150 for one. But as I say, many other lenses are available. I have just been using recently this TT Artisan. 100mm f2.8. This is an M42 lens so you can use this on your film cameras or on your digital cameras and this lens in fact makes images that are very reminiscent of the Meyer Optic Trio plan and it gives beautiful bubbles in the background blur from specular highlights you know from point light sources in the back of the shot. This is a really nice lens as well. It's not particularly expensive and it's really nicely made. And as well as that, it's a new lens. So no problems with maybe getting a, a vintage lens that isn't quite as good as it should be. These are new and you can buy this today. But there are many, many 100mm f2.8s out there. I highly recommend checking one out because it's a wonderful way to shoot. Right, there is an even longer focal length that is readily available in f2.8 maximum aperture, guys. And that is, I've got one of them here. In fact, I've got a couple of them here. That is 135 millimeters. There are a lot of 135 millimeter f2.8 lenses around. Some of them are from major manufacturers. Now, those ones 
are relatively expensive because most of the major manufacturers made a 3.5 135mm and that was the sort of bread and butter lens that most people went for. If you went for an f2.8 from the major manufacturers like Minolta or Nikon or somebody like that, that was going to cost you a little more and they're still reasonably pricey today. So my solution, my suggestion is third party or lesser known manufacturers. This one is a Helios and this is a beautiful f2.8 135 millimeter lens. There are loads of others. I mean, I've got a really nice one here, which I featured on the show um, maybe a couple of months ago. This is the Hanimex 135 f2.8. This is a gorgeous lens, possibly the nicest 135 I've shot, certainly up there among the nicest. I've got one here just as an example that I haven't shot because when I bought this, it became obvious there were uh, quite a lot of faults with it, so I've not really used it. But it, this is an Optomax, uh, again, a very cheap sort of make, really not expensive back in the day, made to supply the sort of budget market back in the day. Um, but very nice lenses, many of them. This Helios is a lovely lens. Let's have a closer look at this lens. All right, there's our Helios, and you can see that beautiful big front element and all the lovely purple coatings that this lens has on it. I don't know that this was actually made by any of the Soviet manufacturers. I think this might be one that was made by one of the Western manufacturers of third party equipment of the time. And there were many of them, manufacturers like Cosina and Vivitar and those kinds of people. It's got a little hood, extending hood. This one's a little bit loose from use but it's still really useful to have. You can see that that big front element is gonna really easily catch the light. Coatings look lovely, the whole thing is nice. Everything turns nicely and smoothly. Ah, yes, look, lens made in Japan. So this was made by one of the third party manufacturers of the time. It's actually a really nice lens. It's an M42 mount, many of these third party lenses were in M42 mount, others were in mounts from the major manufacturers and in K mount as well. So that's a really lovely lens and one that I can highly recommend. So there we are. I'm really not sure who made the lens, exactly where it came from, exactly what its heritage or lineage is, but it's an F2.8 135mm with 15 aperture blades and that can't be bad. These can be found for around 30 to 40 quid less if you're patient. Same with this uh, Hanimex or the Optimax that I've got here. All of these lenses from the cheaper manufacturers will be still cheap today. And some of them, like the Helios and the Hanimex, will give you really, really nice images and really shouldn't be sniffed or sneezed at. These are some of the best bargains in vintage lenses that there are at the moment. My advice, if you want a nice 135mm, consider an F3.5 from the major manufacturers for sure, but also consider an F2.8 from one of the third party manufacturers. Some very, very nice ones around. So there we are, those are the virtues of f2.8. And it shows that, or it means that you don't have to spend a huge amount of money to get a really nice, interesting, characterful vintage lens. All the lens I've shown you today, all of those lenses will give you characterful images with quirks and little foibles that we expect from vintage lenses. They'll all play around with the light in a beautiful manner and they'll all make you fantastic images. And that at the end of the day really is what it's all about. It's not about the fancy name on the lens. It's not about how much your lens costs or how fancy it is or how wide the aperture opens. It's about making the images and all of these lenses will make you some fantastic ones. All of them are highly recommended and it just shows that it really is true. 
everything really is great at f2.8. So that's it from me for today. I hope this episode has been interesting. I hope you've found it useful and enjoyable. Many, many thanks go to subscribers for your support. Thank you for that support. It really is appreciated. And if you've enjoyed this show, why not chuck us a sub? That would be appreciated too. Thanks also go to patrons, without whom this show could not be made in the form that it is. So many, many thanks to you. That's a heartfelt thank you. And thank you also to everybody else who has watched today. I hope it's been useful, interesting and enjoyable. And if you like the content on this show, if you like the channel, why not consider becoming a patron yourself? You can do that for as little as one dollar per month and you can do it over at www.patreon.com forward slash xenography. I ought to know that by now. Thank you very, very much for watching everybody. If you're not doing anything too stressful or difficult next week around this time, please do tune in for a spot more. Xenography. Cheerio all.